You know, over the past week or so, we've been hearing a lot about the hurricane hunters in this case. Yeah, we're getting some insight from them about what goes into that job. Andrew Clay joining us live uh, just outside the KATC studios with more tonight. Hey, Andrew. Over the past week or so, guys, you've heard Rob talk about hurricane hunters. Now, these are actual people who fly in and out storms, tracking them and collecting data. Well, today I caught up with Nick Underwood. He's a NOAA aerospace engineer. I wanted to learn more about Hurricane Laura and these missions. Nick, when was your last flight out in this storm? Uh, we took off at 5 a.m. this morning and landed back at around 1.15 in the afternoon. So you'd have been flying through that rapid intensification period? Uh, we had. So uh, yesterday morning uh, when we flew, uh, we found the storm as a Category 1 hurricane. And uh, 24 hours later, at the start of our next mission, it was a Category 2 hurricane. And by the tail end of our mission today, uh, the National Hurricane Center was getting ready to upgrade it to a Category 4 storm. So when you're flying during that period, is it different? Is the turbulence just do you feel the turbulence ramping up? What's that like? Uh, it's certainly something that we brief uh, because rapidly intensifying storms can definitely be more dynamic uh, than storms that are, say, more established already. Uh, so it's, we do take some extra precautions, uh, you know, make sure the seatbelts are extra tight. Uh, but we still punch through just like any other storm. Now you guys release some little devices they were called what drops nodes uh drop sons drop sons actually have one right here uh so think of this like a weather balloon in reverse so we launch these out of the bottom of the aircraft and they have a parachute that comes out and as they float down they're collecting temperature pressure humidity uh, wind speed and wind direction and relaying all of that data back to the aircraft in real time and then once those splash in the ocean we send that data to the national hurricane center so that they can use it in their forecast models. Does anything from this storm stand out to you when you've flown through it? Uh, it certainly is. I, I've been chasing storms for the last four years and I've flown a couple storms that have rapidly intensified and this one certainly ramped up pretty quickly. Does this storm compare to any other storms you've covered? Uh, I would say as far as flying through it is concerned, uh, once you've flown one storm, I mean, they're all different in their own way, but you kind of get used to the turbulence and, you know, the mission profiles and everything like that. So for us uh, up in the aircraft, it's, it's just another day at the office. What is that day like, though, that first time you get up there and, and you see a storm from a very different perspective? Uh, so my first uh, flight through a major hurricane was actually... Hurricane Matthew in 2016, and I certainly wasn't uh, mentally prepared for the ride at that time, and so I did get pretty sick during that flight. Uh, but just being up there and you know seeing these storms for the forces of nature that they are really gives you a, a level of respect for them, uh, and you certainly think about the people that are on the ground that are going to be impacted by these systems. How many trips did you take into Laura? Uh, we started flying the system when it was still Tropical Depression 13 out in the Atlantic. Uh, this was last Thursday. And we flew a mission on Thursday, a mission on Friday. We had a down day on Saturday to reset our clocks uh, to make sure we keep flying. And then we flew Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, and today. Uh, and I would say in total, I think I... Uh, we got nine hurricane penetrations uh, since it just became a hurricane yesterday, but flew through the storm, you know, probably 10, 15 times. How did it differ from, how does this flight differ from, you know, last Thursday when it was still a depression to today when, when it's a, a roaring hurricane? Uh, the views are certainly different. Uh, when it's a tropical depression or even just a tropical storm, the system's really trying to get its act together. Um, a mission earlier this week when it was still tropical storm, uh, Laura, south of um, Hispaniola, there was a lot of lightning around uh, and, you know, not a really well-defined center. But over the last few days, especially after moving off the coast of Cuba and out into the Gulf of Mexico, it's really started to take that form. And today, when it achieved Category 3 strength and, you know, approaching Category 4, we really got to see uh, what we call the stadium effect inside the eye, which is we're flying through at 8,000 feet 
and these cloud tops are you know reaching up to 40 50,000 feet and kind of looks like you're on the field of a football stadium uh, so it certainly certainly changes you know over the course of this over the lifetime of the storm um, and it's it's all really something to behold can you take us through what one of these flights looks like and, and what you experience on that plane uh, so we start pre-flight about two hours before we take off and that includes um, prepping any expendables that we're going to launch, making sure all the science systems are ready to go, making sure the aircraft is ready to go. So we've got ground maintainers who are checking the flaps, checking the engines, making sure that the aircraft is you know, going to keep us safe up there. Uh, we brief the mission, we take off. Usually it's about an hour, an hour and a half transit time to the storm. Uh, once we get there, we descend down to our operational altitude, which is usually between eight to 12,000 feet. And we have a predetermined pattern that we'll fly. Uh, and so we'll head to our first point, descend down, and start flying through the storm. And at that point is where my job really picks up in the back of the aircraft, launching the drop sons, watching the data as it comes in. And uh, over the course of a single mission flight, we'll usually launch around 20 of the drop sons. And in addition to those instruments, we're collecting radar data uh, and really just any bit of information that we can to help the National Hurricane Center predict what that storm is going to do. Again, that's Nick Underwood, an aerospace engineer from NOAA. He's been flying in and out of Laura over the last week. The missions he and his crew go on are vitally important to gathering data to help build forecasts that help keep you safe. Jim, Marcel? That's pretty cool to see that behind the scenes. It really is cool to hear him talk about, hunters. yeah, to hear him talk about his experiences mm -hmm. going through the storms. We see it from one perspective and his perspective altogether different. Yeah, absolutely. And not many people can get that perspective either. Well, I, well asked, I asked Rob and Bradley while the package was rolling if either of them would like to go into a storm. They both said yes. They're a little concerned about the motion sickness that might be there from the turbulence, but both of them agree that yeah. it would be cool. <laughs> I can imagine. 